So I've been talking a lot lately about people who actually have time with their kids and thought it would be, thought I needed to hit the topic of people who don't. And I know that, that a lot of times, it, it, I'm kind of in a tough spot on this because when people are in the early stages, I don't necessarily want to throw out the worst case scenarios because your fears and everything are so ramped up anyways that throwing out that uh, reality or potential reality can really feed into that catastrophic thinking when you're already thinking that you're going to lose your kids and they're going to destroy the relationship with them. Uh, it can ramp up your anxiety and your stress levels to the point that it just compounds everything and could potentially make what you're fearful of happen. The, the problem is, is whenever you're in the situation to where you would just give anything to have interaction with your children. It's, it's really tough because that everything else doesn't make sense. Now, now I know that I'm not in that situation. Um, I can relate to feeling that because I really thought that that was the way things were heading whenever I was going through my situation. And that was the fight, right? I mean, that was what I was fighting against was moving the kids out of state and being relegated to seeing them if I was lucky a couple of times a year. Uh, and I pretty much figured that if that happened, then the alienation, which I didn't really understand parental alienation at the time, but I understood what had happened to me, would sink in. And that it would just be one of those foregone things to where I knew the kids would be, you would just, they would just get acclimated to not having me around. It, the tough part is, is, yes, there's a possibility of it. So in the first part of it, if you're in the beginning stages of it, then you know, work to do everything you can to, to fight the good fight and try to have as much interaction and have as much time with your kids as possible. Uh, one of the things that I did mess up on is that I wasn't necessarily pushing, when I first started pushing for shared care or 50-50 custody, um, I wanted joint physical and joint legal, but the, the timing wasn't that big of an issue because initially I thought that it would work out, right? I was like, well, I'm not gonna push it because I don't wanna make her mad, so I'll be okay with what happens and uh, because it'll just work out. Now, to kind of dovetail on the video the other day, I highly encourage you not to do that. Do not do that. If somebody is not willing to work with you right at the beginning and they're fighting you with time, then make sure you get as much time as possible. Yeah, I get the time is money, but time is also control. Um, one of the early things and the reason I finally ultimately switched on this is when I was talking to my attorney, they had recommended that anything less than 50-50 increases, increases the possibility that the court could potentially allow her to leave the state with the kids. If they're majority with her anyways, and they could turn around and say, well, it's only weekends, so you could just have, during the summer, you could have you know, more time and it would be the same thing in the court's eyes, so leaving is, is not a big deal. As all you guys know, the biggest thing is being a part of, of um, being an active part of the kids' lives. Okay, but that's not necessarily what this video is about, so, so let me dive back into what I'm trying to talk about. And that is the worst case scenario to where either your kids are alienated against you or maybe they turned against you. That's happened to a handful of people on the channel. And you're stuck in a situation to where you have limited, I mean severely limited or no time. Now, the problem with all of this is all the stuff that you, you lose, quote unquote, and it can be a, a couple of, you know, it can be all kinds of different things, but when you feel like you lose your kids, that wound can feel like a mortal wound. And, it, and I get it because if everything you've, you've based what you're doing in your marriage and your life and your family life was based on being a parent, whether you're the mom or the dad, and now that's ripped away from you, that's a pretty bitter pill to swallow. But here's the thing, and it, and it, it, it dovetails with a lot of the things I talk about. The problem is this is a little harder, and, and that is it's about perspective. Now, it's, for somebody in this situation, for me to be able to say, well, you know, it's been really tough, and I have 50-50, and there's still a nightmare scenario with it, you can be looking at it going, really? I mean, I would give my left arm for, to have 50-50, to have that type of connectivity, to have the relationship that, that I have with my kids, and I, and I get that. 
But the truth on this or the reality is, is that you have to find a way to find your peace in the midst of this. You, you have to find a way to go on because you can't allow this to destroy you. Now, sometimes it's the ex turning our children against us completely, to, like I did with my own father, to where you know, the child basically says, you're, you're, I believe everything that I've been told, you're crap, and I don't want to, you know, and they're, they're, they're basically lashing out and hurting you. The thing is, is that you have to find a way to go on. You have to find a way to continue with life. You have to find a way to find some type of joy. And I know that if you're looking in this situation and everything's been ripped away from you, that can be incredibly difficult. But I think a lot of times, I think this is all kind of a gigantic test, which is annoying. But I think what happens is, is that it's like we have to make our peace with this. And you can allow this situation to basically destroy you and corrupt every aspect of your life. Or you can pick up the pieces and start to try to make the most of it. And I know that that is when you're looking at that and you're feeling that pain just in your heart, that it's that it's it, it seems impossible. And I, and I say that because, I mean, I know I'm not in the same situation, but I know how I felt when I at the beginning parts of this and how much everything hurt. If you choose, well, maybe that's not the right way. But if you if you stay in that situation and you stay in that mode you will never heal from this. You will always be, be in that situation. And of course, there, you know, when this stuff happens, there is an impact. You are gonna have that hole in your heart and that situation. Sorry about that, it's airplanes, so creates conflict, or not conflict, but problems when I'm trying to do this. But to get back to the point, you owe it to yourself to find a way to, to move on and to start to rebuild your life. And I, and I know that is so hard to do. I know whenever you're just longing for a connection with your children, whether they're old enough, they're over the age of 18 and they have the ability to make their own decisions and they're choosing not to, just you know, keep the door open in case they ever do, which is really tough. I haven't made a video about this in a while, but I mean, the reality of it is, is if, if and when they do reach out to you, more than likely you're gonna have to deal with, yeah. and we're gonna have to deal with it and allow them to lash out and be able to have open communications and listen to them, really listen to them and validate their experience. And I would highly encourage you whenever that does happen that you just, you don't go in defensive mode. It's gonna be hurtful because they don't understand everything. They don't understand what's happened. They've been brainwashed to think and feel a certain way. But it's, it's one of those things where, I, I, and, and just to, to, before I wrap this up, let me just say that, that you know, everyone's at different stages of this. So a lot of times I'll, ta I'll tailor a message to a particular audience. Granted, I don't really push it or publish who it's to, you know, for specifically normally in a, in a video, but a lot of this is just to try to keep people on track, keep their, their, their hopes up to just make it to the next day, to just keep plugging along. The, the thing I wanna leave you with is if you're in this situation, I do honestly believe that most children do really want to have a relationship with the other parent. I know I did with my dad. I know I completely uh, was alienated against him and uh, was, you know, I mean, I was, I was hurt by the whole thing, didn't understand his perspective on it. And we were never able to have the type of conversations that I'm trying to encourage you to be open for with your children. I do think, like I said, that I think most children do want to know their other parent. I mean, sometimes they don't, and sometimes that is a reality of it. And, you know, to the last thing I want to say is, is if you're, if you're in that situation, you owe it to yourself to find a way to move on. You owe it to yourself to find a new perspective or, or to change your priorities up because you can't just give up on life. And one of the things I know, even in my situation, 
just the anger and betrayal that I had felt, I knew that if I didn't make my peace with it, it would corru corrupt the rest of my life and I didn't want that to happen and I don't want that to happen to you. So as I leave this, if you have some tips that have helped you that could potentially help someone else deal with their situation on that heartache and that heartbreak of your children basically being ripped from you, uh, share it because it could help somebody who's, who's really struggling with this right now. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, please subscribe. And um, I'll chat with you on the next video. Take care.